Do you see any improvements in the lives of the women or for gender equality? The short answer for that question is an yes. You see women as federal ministers, you see women in the local government becoming mayors. It's a triple win for Pakistan, bringing women to the economy. Women who don't go out to earn are probably smarter. I think this is just a myth. This is a grandmother's tale. 64% of the country are young people. We have the best set of laws. Pakistan is very proud of the Highly fact. Highly legislated country. Why is it these dramas always projecting a woman attacking another woman? We should say, Aurat, Aurat ka dushman nehi hona chahiye. Article 25 clearly says that men and women should be treated equally in this country. Pakistan's politics is captured by the elite. The way they talk about women politicians, the way they report um, violence against women cases, um, all of the media is not sensitized, unfortunately. We see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Assalamu alaikum, Nabila Malik, Aaj ka podcast Gender Talk uh, ke saath aap ke saamne hazir hai. Gender Talk is the podcast that is being launched today by UN Women Pakistan. It is first of its kind and we are very proud to present it. We will be discussing a lot of gender related issues. Today, as the first uh, podcast, we have selected the very broader subject of the status of women in Pakistan. Today, I have with me two very, very dynamic ladies who have been trying very hard to change the landscape of Pakistan as far as the gender equality and women empowerment is concerned. We have with us Nilofar Bakhtiar, the chairperson of the National Commission on the Status of Women. And we have with us Sharmila Rasool, country representative of UN Women Pakistan. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining me today. My first question will be to you, Sharmila because uh, you're the country rep of uh, UN Women and this is UN Women bot, uh, podcast. I would like to start because we are talking about statistics and the general status of women. So well, like, let's start with a little um, background information. If you were to analyze the last 25 years, do you see any improvements in the lives of the women or for gender equality? Nabila, thank you very much for that very important question. The short answer for that question is an yes. So it's an yes for you, yes for the chairperson who's joining us, and a yes for Pakistan. So as a foreigner in this beautiful land, why do I say it's an yes? Because if you look at the last 20 years, everything is not bad. Everything is not worse. There are some improvements. The literacy rate for women has improved significantly. There are more women in the labor force than it was before 20 years ago. More women are taking public service examinations and joining public service. We have women joining the police service. Percentage is increasing. I'm not saying it's fantastic. It's 3%, not enough, but it is increasing. And we see now women taking into new professions. We see women truck drivers, women driving three-wheelers, women uh, traffic police officers in the streets. That is something 20 years ago. I didn't, don't think Pakistan would have envisioned that change. That's very good to know. Uh, we have with us the chairperson of the National Commission on the Status of Women. And I did not tell you this before because I think people in Pakistan already know that uh, before joining this position, uh, she has been in the politics for a long time and has been the minister, federal minister for women rights, uh, um, among other uh, portfolios that she was holding. For, from you, what I would like to hear is that whatever Sharmila said and Sharmila uh, coming from Sri Lanka, working a lot in this country, uh, can you talk about that? Can you give us some substantial proof of what she's saying? I think uh, to begin with, I would endorse what Sharmila has just said. Good. And uh, allow me to say that Sharmila also knows Pakistan very well. Uh -huh. 
It's the second time that she's come back to Pakistan. And she has always been very, very vocal about the empowerment and advancement of women in this country. And I would also like to appreciate this initiative of UN Women, because this is the first time ever that we're going to have a podcast focused only on women issues. So thank you again, UN Women, for this initiative. Uh, yes, Nabila, I think women have come a long way because I have been an activist in this country for the past many decades now. And I remember the times when we used to be standing in front of the Parliament of Pakistan protesting for a repeal of various legislations in the country, for reservation of seats in the Parliament of Pakistan, uh, for a quota in government service. All that has eventually happened. And you see women as federal secretaries today. You see women as federal ministers. You see women in the local government becoming mayors, uh, becoming women councillors who are extremely affected, effective at the local body level. So it's women everywhere in every field of life. Uh, I would say that statistics may not appear too glamorous. I agree. But the real fact is that the women of Pakistan today are much more confident. They come up, they go to the police stations, they report if there is a crime against them. They stand up against their own families if they have to for, for the protection of their rights. So this is a completely changed atmosphere. And then the media is so vibrant in Pakistan today. Mm. Very, very supportive. Absolutely. The structure of the law enforcement agencies has changed. Judiciary looks at us differently now. So I think we have made progress. Good to hear that. You mentioned it's interesting. You mentioned statistics as the commission's chair, are you doing something to uh, have authentic, credible statistics on uh, gender or uh, women issues? Are, is there any initiative like that at the NCSW? Look, this is a big challenge for this country and for many countries, developing countries like Pakistan, that they do not have gender desegregated data available. Mm. And if it's available, it's not authentic, it's not verified. And as government of Pakistan, we cannot share any data which is not authentic. So thanks again to UN Women. They helped us two years ago, and we now have a national gender data portal housed at our headquarters here in Islamabad. We have 10 thematic areas. We have 163 indicators. I will not say that we have it all. Mm -hmm. But gradually and slowly, we have made a lot of progress. And we have reached out to all the provinces, Azad Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan. And to the higher levels, when we reach out, we ask them for help and support. Low levels, we are training them to collect this data and transfer that data to the National Commission on the Status of Women. So it's an entire process that we are working with UN Women and, and with their support, I think in the next few years, everything will be straightened up. And then the world gender indices, which are ranking Pakistan extremely low today, will have to revise their reporting mechanism. Right. So uh, we, talk, we heard about the National Gender Data Portal, and that sounds very interesting. If you were to pick... Uh, what are the areas that you covered? She mentioned briefly, since it's in partnership with UN Women, would you like to elaborate on that? And then coming to the two most important topics in that and why they are, do you think they're important? At the moment, we are navigating in Pakistan without a compass. This is our compass to find where are the improvements and where are the problems. So we can copy the improvements and scale it up and address the problems when it has to be addressed, not in 100 years, yes? So this is the compass. Now, what has the compass done so far? We have released the first summary report. Status of the woman can be reported. So this compass tells us on 10 different areas 
what is the current status of Pakistan? Of these 10 areas, these 10 areas were selected together with the chairperson and under her guidance, talking to many community members across Pakistan in all its provinces and regions. Yeah. And we came up with these 10 areas. And these 10 areas are naturally touching on all women and girl children of this country. Yeah. So, but the 10 areas, as you said, it's a bit wide. Right. So if we were to pick where Pakistan needs to accelerate, my take would be in three areas. First would be the women economic empowerment. Okay. Because more women in the economy makes the woman stronger, makes her autonomous, independent financially. She can then contribute to herself, her family, her community, her nation. So it's a triple win for Pakistan, bringing yeah. women to the economy. Second area that I would like uh, Pakistan to give a push acceleration would be to reduce the evils against the women. There are two evils in every country. My country, the same in Pakistan, all South Asian countries suffer from this evil. It is discrimination and violence. Violence in, is in fact a manifestation of discrimination. So these two evils need to be eradicated completely. So that's the second area that I would like to focus. The third area, which is an area of a catalyst, which can act as a catalyst, is women leadership, women participation, be it in politics, be it in the economy, be it in governance, be it in the public, private sector. Whatever the sector that woman chooses, her sector, her participation, her leadership. So those are the three top areas that Pakistan should focus and I think needs acceleration. I think I I agree, but let's ask the chairperson, do you, number one, agree with these, this prioritization of topics? And more uh, like uh, what I'm more interested in finding out are your views on, I've heard women say that uh, ever since women have gone out to earn money, they have doubled their burden and women who don't go out to earn are probably smarter. What do you say to that and where does that come from? Why would women start thinking like that? I think this is just a myth. This is a grandmother's tale. Women in the past were advised just to stay within the four walls of their homes, not to get out, norms, traditions, taboos. Sometimes they use religion as a barrier, you know, all kinds of tactics are used so that women do not leave their homes. Now, the important part is that who is now going to earn the bread? For example, in households which are only headed by women. Also, because the current status of our economy, we need both man and woman to work side by side. So if that does not happen, the household does not run. So we need these women to go out and earn a living. Now, access to workplace, the environment at the workplace, then their access to various kinds of tools and gadgets which make them reach out to the market. Internet availability we were just discussing a little while ago. These are the things which help the women to come up and rise in the job market and then make them financially strong as Shamila just mentioned unless they're empowered economically this will not change the structure of our society because economically empowered woman only can stand up and defend and speak out for her rights and when a woman has money in the bag when a woman can access internet, online banking and, you know, make a living sitting at home, mm. then she's stronger. She has a voice in decision making. She can speak up. And also the education. If she's not educated, I mean, I was looking at the figures uh, where the countries have internet access for women and Pakistan only has 50% women who can handle 
any kind of internet device okay now if they have these telephones it's only 30% and out of this 30% only 19% are smartphones mm. so what's the use true and then they're not allowed to use these phones and if you look at the global ranking for internet access for women out of one uh, out of 134 pakistan ranks at 133 the second last so the figures are not very uh, happy and uh, we are not proud of those figures but we need to improve the situation the national commission on the status of women along with un partners un women undp and unfpa has come up with a complete report on digitalization and women in pakistan we now have an action plan we are now at the moment working with provinces for a provincial policy framework so this is another way but coming back to violence against women mm. we have the best set of laws sharmila you know that pakistan is very proud of the highly fact highly legislated country very yeah. highly and for every act of violence there is somebody who speaks out it's not that the government is ignorant the police is not taking action so every day a new policy reform is coming up to prevent these cases of violence but it is still happening i mean we have only 21% women in the workforce and 64% women are in the informal sector mm. so when they are in the informal sector the cases of violence have to be on the rise you know what happens inside the homes inside those places for example small factory areas so violence has to be avoided has to be stopped but for that we need implementation of those legislations and unless we forcefully implement those legislations it will not happen i want to pick up yeah. on the chairperson nabila before you go to the next question i mean laws are very important chairperson and i completely agree why do we need laws we need a law in a country when there is a behavioral gap to address the gap we bring a law but the law does not necessarily change the attitude so it takes time yeah. for an attitudinal change what pakistan right now needs is an attitudinal change alongside the progressive laws the, the black and white pages can exist people can read them sometimes they don't understand what is written there yeah. that's a different uh, another topic to discuss but an attitudinal change is a must i have seen in some countries including in pakistan and sometimes in my team men wear pink shirts pink t-shirts just to show that they are pro women yes. but that's not an attitudinal change that's a start perhaps of an attitudinal change a yeah. behavioral change showing showing that they are champions of the cause but we need much more than that so what i would also talk want to talk in this podcast is how that's happening because at the moment pakistan is trans in a transition why i say it's in a transition is because 64% of the country are young people now that's a phenomenon is not common it's a very uncommon phenomenon in my country sri lanka we are aging population but pakistan has the young blood the young energy this transition has to be completely used to the benefit of the country but also for the benefit of the women of the country for you respond to that i just want to talk to my audience and i would like to hear from them in the uh, comment section if you can let us know if you agree with what charmila said that having a young population is a dividend that we have and we are not utilizing it to the best of uh, its potential but nonetheless it is something that's very positive and happening right now in pakistan how do you think the youth of pakistan can change behaviors in this country that will be my question and we're looking forward to hearing from our young girls boys anybody who's out there watching this there are sayings here and the, when we talk about attitudinal change these things that we've been hearing from our grandmothers and our mothers they keep coming to our minds that zan zar zameen mm. so they're all products objects 
reducing this how what is your take on that and do you have something like that in sri lanka or sri lanka is you know has no such issues how how would you compare the two countries sri lanka indeed has issues uh, indeed has issues related to gender equality and discrimination i wish we didn't but the reality is uh, not what we wish but they may be a little bit lesser than pakistan we have a similar saying which says uh, and i'm going to say it in singhala yeah. it is gahanna uh, puluwang bereta wahallata and gahaniyata so what does it mean if i translate it yes. it means that you can hammer a woman a slave and a uh, drum so hammer you know, hammer meaning Hit pound, her. pound, beat, hit, yeah. beat. Yeah. Oh my God. So, so this is this is the mindset change I was initially referring to, attitudinal change, because women are not objects. Of course. Women so. are not uh, half human beings. Women are not the subordinate human being of a man. Women are themselves full human beings, and this recognition is missing, very largely missing, I would say. in most countries and that is the attitudinal change we have to make they men have to realize that they are as equal as we are that change is very 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 slow unfortunately jefferson i'm i'm sorry for interrupting i'm sure you lost that thought so i'll continue with what i was thinking before i lose it I've been watching some uh, Pakistani dramas, and like Shamila said about the attitudinal changes, uh, I've seen you watch a couple as well. What is the media projecting? Is that having any positive impact, or is hiding uh, or helping us head in the direction, right direction, when we talk about attitude change towards the way we look at gender roles? because the couple of uh, plays that i have watched surprisingly they exaggerate so much the negativity in both genders that it's shocking and what do you think is the impact of that kind of projection from our television that is there we have it 24/7 now and it's these dark plays are on the loop and if you get hooked on them you keep watching them again and again So, okay, what is your take on that, and what do you have to say about those people who make these plays? Uh, Nabila, uh, it's not just the plays; mm. it's the entire media thing. You know, I would talk about the shows, the talk shows, even the uh, talk shows where they have political discussions. The way they talk about women, women. politicians, the way they report um, violence against women cases. Uh, but all of the media is not sensitized unfortunately there are few dramas i would say which are substantial you know they refer to issues and they cover the challenges being faced by women things are changing gradually by the way the national commission on the status of women has also launched a media fellowship program we have just entered our second cycle mm. and it is huge uh, sharmila with this we pick up journalists media persons from the entire country last year it was uh, 37 people this time we've uh, picked up 40 people and we train them at iba this is in collaboration with iba and unfpa and it is huge because once they're trained by us they're sensitized they go back and they work as our brand ambassadors throughout mm-hmm. the country so these are now our agents of change these media fellows so i think uh, this small effort is the first time that the government of pakistan has made an effort mm. to train and sensitize the national media i think chairperson you are doing a great service to this country not just this country i would say to the region because pakistan is the fifth populous country in the world so what pakistan does matters mm. in the region it matters to the world because it's the fifth populous country by the virtue of its size i think the media has to be sensitized why is it these dramas always projecting a woman attacking another woman yeah. it's the step sister attacking the sister it's the mother in law attacking the daughter in law uh, or a girlfriend attacking the wife or vice versa now 
why does it have to be a woman always attacking a woman? I mean, that even has a proverb in Urdu, isn't it? Uh, we should change that proverb. We should say, Aurat, Aurat ka dushman nehi hona chahiye. <laughs> nehi hona chahiye. True. So how do we change this? Because this is, um, this is the... This is the side of the woman. Okay, the men are treating women badly, but should women also treat women badly? No, the interesting part is, Jamila, I, I have lived in Pakistan all my life, seen women all around me, different classes. You know, you interact with different uh, levels, uh, at different levels with different people. I have not seen that in real life. Mm. My question was that when you exaggerate just to get rating, what is the impact of it? The same behavior change is actually going in the wrong direction because you are probably setting up examples that this is also an okay behavior. I think it has a huge impact. I yeah. can give you an example from a colleague in my team who's now going to become a mother-in-law very soon. And she is really struggling to move away from the typical stereotype mother-in-law. It's a conflict in her head and she tells me that I'm watching dramas to see how not to do what she should be doing as a mother-in-law. So I think it's a huge impact. It does. It does. Definitely. I, I totally agree with you and uh, like you said I think sensitizing media is a very smart move media has a, it reaches out and it spins out of control with negative message it can uh, damage as much as with positive messages Absolutely. it can improve so um, another thing that we would briefly touch upon although it's a huge topic is women uh, leadership Jefferson, uh, I would like to ask you, because you have been uh, um, in politics for long, you've uh, um, held very important positions at federal minister and all. Do you see uh, improvement in the lives of women politicians? What are the major issues? How can they be improved? Just very briefly, just to give us the sense of where we are heading and what's happening right now. You see, it wasn't easy to get so many women in the parliament. Mm. And then we had to have this legislation for 17% reserve seats, which was a very lengthy process. Finally, we got them there, 33% in the local government. So the entire process took us many, many years. When finally it happened, we thought we will have them there only for about two rounds of elections. And then they would get independent enough and confident enough to contest general elections. Mm. But unfortunately, it happened in 2002. Until date, we have those reserve seats. And almost the same women keep on coming back on those reserve seats. So I fear that when these women come on reserve seats, they do not have the women's agendas as their priority. They always have to look up to the party leadership for the party agendas, which is uh, something important as well. Yeah. But at the same time, when they come on reserve seats, they don't contest general elections, they should talk about the women issues. And there's so many of these in this country, one. But otherwise, if you see, I think they've made progress. Even today, we have a finance minister who's a female. Mm -hmm. She was our first state bank governor many years ago. Mm. So she's a very fine woman. And there are many others. We can go on taking names who have made progress and they've created impact on the lives of women in Pakistani politics. If we just have women who have no background, who have no actual knowledge about how to conduct themselves with political business, it's, it means nothing to us, to the women of Pakistan. And unfortunately, most of these women, when they come up in these positions, they're very insecure. Mm. Unfortunately, Shamila, you must have seen this in many other areas of work also. You see that women, when they come on these top positions, they are very insecure. It's because of the insecurity they face as children, maybe, in their families. And they just learn to look after themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you said, Aurat, Aurat ki dushman, 
नहीं है दे हैव टू वेन दे गो अप दे हैव टू होल्ड द हैंड्स ऑफ वुमेन हु डाउन बिलो एंड ब्रिंग दम अप एज वेल डोंट पुल द लैडर Yes. Keep the ladder for the others to climb. Exactly. Pakistan's politics is captured totally. by the elite, totally. and this is not helpful for the country because the talents are elsewhere. How do we bring these talents to the places of governance where Pakistan can really project its talents? Because the local government system in this country does not work. Therefore, there is no leadership pipeline developed. so that new blood can come in new thinking can come in we didn't don't want a stagnation of the thinking so this cycle needs to change chairperson and i think i don't want to give a totally negative spin on this although it is negative to be very honest and frank there is something positive that has happened very recently the current speaker has launched uh, what is called a common gender manifesto for all the parties and that is that document will be launched i mean it's launched already not officially launched it will be officially launched very soon and the parties that uh, came together it's all the parties in pakistan came together to see what is their priority for women and girls in pakistan so that's creating some ripple effect i hope that it will be uh, real it, the effects or the ripple effects will not just stay in the house of governance it will move to the people on the ground i hope and so Nabila too and nabila is now absolutely. really looking at yes. angry because she wants to no, ask the question no i want to ask the question i'm so, i'm sorry but uh, Imagine I'm your fairy godmother. Mm-hmm. I'll grant you one wish, and I'll grant you one wish to change the status of women in Pakistan to make it better. What is the one thing that you wish for right now? I want women to stop producing children. Oh my God! My major concern right now is that this country is overpopulated. Yes. Yeah, so and this is one area where we've not worked enough. no government okay in the past planning. had has taken serious notice of this issue and this is a huge challenge absolutely because i think the more the population is the issues become bigger and impossible to handle your one wish Mom, okay i'm going to grant you that by the way yes, yes. perhaps wish that it is a period of time because otherwise pakistan yeah. will be what well, like sri lanka is The yeah we we have to keep producing like you know let's just put a limit and not But not just not to produce stop. or period or period they have to or stop somewhere oh child true. marriages they're so young when they get married and Absolutely. then they start producing those children it is sad to see the state of health of the women of this country let me hear your wish chemila uh, it's called triple but, burden no okay your wish one beyond borders Uh, just south asia one wish will right. be that women have their full human rights okay so in that context because uh, i'm a celestial being i don't really understand what is gender equality what is it that we keep talking about and sometimes i hear people say gender thingy yes i hate <laughs> it people say shamila tell me about your gender thingy and i'm like what thingy <laughs> is the thingy that you're referring to or tell me about the gender facts so people use this yeah, terminology uh, terminology is very, confusing, is very confusingly and at times out of context so it's really hurtful when people ask that question so gender equality is a very simple simple um, we can i can give a very simple explanation uh, to to gender equality is to have equal access to resources and equal opportunities it's so simple it's not rocket science <coughs> i'll break it down for you nabila yeah. in the household we know when our brothers eat with us the mum gives the best meat pieces <laughs> to the brothers now that's not access to equal resources and when the mom and dad eat after the children eat or perhaps the dad eats with the brothers and then the mom eats last mom has nothing basically she eats just the rice and with some dal and if she's lucky that is yes. or she just eats plain rice or one piece of roti or one roti this is not equal access to resources you see it's not that very difficult no but there is a lot of confusion around it Do you think that confusion is deliberate, or people 
really don't understand it. How difficult is it that if we are all humans, we should all have rights and they should be equal? So it's, I think the, the, the Western part of the world has got it somewhat right. Okay. Uh, not to say that they apply that to everybody equally. Right. Yeah, but at it's least debatable. They get, it. They get yeah. it. So that means it's not a matter of not getting it. So it could be both what you just mentioned, a mix of both those things that you explain. Basically, if you get it, you, you know that you have to sacrifice some things, yeah? And my audience is also one thing that you could wish for and the wish could come true. And I'm talking in context of gender equality, women empowerment, based on your own experiences. Give us one thing in the comment box that you would like to change or see changed overnight. What is that top priority thing that you would like to see changed? That's our question to our viewers. Interesting things going on. We, we were raised in this country. We saw how people have changed. It was unusual to see women on motorcycles. Now the government itself is giving bikes to girls. These are all good signs. These are signs where we are acknowledging that, yes, women have the right to mobility, to uh, exploiting their full potential, to getting the opportunities to exploit full potential. Why is still their resistance? I'm, I'm asking you now, base it on your own experience. Why do you think, one, Shirmila said that there is politics involved and that keeps people... Are there any deeper other fears that are deliberately keeping this uh, balance out and, uh, you know, in favor of uh, the male gender and not uh, against the female gender? Based it on your own experience. I, I think if you put it very simply, it's uh, economics. In the, in the house, look at our reports after COVID. Look at the number of girls who were removed from schools. Mm. Look at the number of girls who've not still gone back to those classes. Yes. Because the men in the family could not afford it. Mm. So the choice was between removing a girl from school or a boy from school. So they decided to remove the girl. girl. Mm. So this is what actually happens. They were frustrated in the houses, sitting, doing nothing, not making enough money. So they started abusing their women mm. in the houses. So simple economics sometimes also affects extremely the status of human rights in a country. Otherwise, Article 25 clearly says that men and women should be treated equally in this country. So what is the hindrance? What is stopping us? Mm -hmm. And then I would also say that a very serious issue in this country is that when they want, they use religion as a shield. And they do not have the real knowledge of the religion. They use Islam, which gives us a negative image internationally. And also, it hinders the pace of progress for women, for little girls, stopping them from school, getting them married at an early age, uh, not allowing them to work. The other day, in one of the conferences organized by UN Women, we saw Justice Mansoor. Mm -hmm. claiming that he was yeah, a feminist, feminist. which for the women of Pakistan was a very yeah, healthy a and thing. you know yeah. positive sign so I'm, I'm 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 not saying that things are not on the right track i'm very positive that we shall inshallah keep on making progress and very soon we shall be Please. there where the other countries of the world are Inshallah to that. I am on my last minute. So any uh, comment that you would like to add before I close this? I just have a message to the women and girls in Pakistan. And I talk to you now, not to Nabila or not to the chairperson. 
I say that you have immense potential. You have talent. You are resilient. But please believe in yourself. Take that first step and never look back. Go forward for yourself, for your community and for Pakistan. Back to you, Nabila. Thank you very much, Shamila. And thank you very much, Nilofar Bakhtiar. I am sitting with these two very powerful women who and are... And also beautiful. Oh, and for that, <laughs> I'm also beautiful. So I'll keep that as a common thing. I am sitting with them feeling very good because although uh, there, uh, there is, you know, the forest is dark and deep and I have promises to keep miles to go before I sleep. But even we see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And even if we go miles, we are heading in the right direction, which is a very positive thing. We would really like our uh, viewers to give us comments, ask us, engage with us, because this is our way of interacting with you. So we know if we need to do something that is higher on your priority list. So we can align our objectives and our goals with you because you are the ones who matter to us and to this country. Because unless and until you join us and be strong, nothing will change. But I'm very hopeful we will, inshallah, change Pakistan for the better where everybody can only be happy if there are equal rights. Mind you, I've been saying that all along. Men cannot be happy alone if the women in the house are unhappy. With that, we close our podcast today. Till next time, Allah Hafiz.